Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final lesson in our series of lessons about the Constitutional Convention and the writing of the U.S. Constitution. Our final lesson is going to cover two topics, so we basically have two essential questions. The first essential question is how can the Constitution be amended, which is another word for changed, and what is the Bill of Rights? We will be covering both of those in just a moment. But right now, go ahead and write down the first essential question across the top of today's notes. As always, we review vocabulary when we get into these lessons, especially vocabulary that's going to be used in that lesson. And as always, I remind you, this should already be in your interactive notebook, so you do not need to write this part down. This is purely for review. Our first term is amendment, which I alluded to one moment ago. An amendment is an official change to the Constitution that is approved by three quarters of the states, or 75% of the states must approve an amendment in order for a change to the Constitution to be added. And our second term is ratify. Ratify is another word for approve. So if you ratify an amendment, you approve a change to the Constitution. To ratify is to formally approve a plan or agreement. Uh, usually we use the word ratify to refer to two things. Um, you can ratify an amendment to the Constitution and the Senate has the power to ratify treaties. A bit of trivia for you. So this graphic is actually better than anything I could come up with myself, so I went ahead and threw it in there. Our question is how can the Constitution be changed? Another word for change is amendment. And so here we have uh, two different ways to do this. Now there are two processes of amending the Constitution. One of them is proposing a change, and the second one is ratifying or approving the change. So there are two ways to propose a change, and there are two ways to ratify or approve changes. So this graphic actually shows both. So in terms of what you're gonna write in your notes, you're gonna come up with a draw a box with four quadrants to it, and you're gonna basically put each of these things in those quadrants. Notice at the top, Proposing the amendment is on one side, ratifying or approving the amendment is on the other side. So there are two ways to propose a change to the Constitution. The first is that both houses of Congress, the House and the Senate, can vote by a two-thirds or more margin to propose the change. Um, once they propose that change, that change is out there to be considered by the states. Uh, the second way to propose a change to the Constitution is that there be a national convention that is requested by two-thirds of the states. So in other words, if Congress is not taking action, if there's a clamoring out in the country for a change to the Constitution, two-thirds of the states, which I believe is 37, uh, could propose a change and uh, then... Um, then you might get that to happen. Actually, I think it's 34, now that I think about it. Um, that has never happened. We have not had a constitutional convention since the constitutional convention in September of 1787. But this is in the constitution and it could theoretically happen. Now, in order to approve the amendment once it's been proposed, there's two ways to do that. Uh, it can be ratified by a vote of three-fourths of the state legislature, so each state individually could vote on it. Once you get to three-quarters of the states, then it officially becomes a change to the Constitution. Or the states could have ratifying conventions to circumvent or go around their legislatures. Uh, theoretically, some states could vote on it in the legislature, and other states could have a convention. Basically, it's up to the states to decide how they go about ratifying or rejecting an amendment, but um, those are the two methods that are permissible under the Constitution. 
and the last time we tried to make a big change to the constitution was called the equal rights amendment and it failed by one state iowa i believe in 1980. Um, it basically would have been an amendment that said men and women are equal under the constitution and must receive the same pay for the same work and there cannot be any discrimination based on gender so uh, the last time we amended the constitution was pretty tame it was in the early 1990s and it basically said that congress could not approve a pay raise in the first year after an election and that's the 27th amendment so there's something we call the bill of rights and the bill of rights is basically the first 10 amendments to the constitution so this is a new left side question um, the Bill of Rights basically was promised um, when the Constitution was sent out to the states to be ratified. Um, people were very, very afraid of it because it didn't spell out in the Constitution itself what rights citizens have. And so it creates a very powerful central government that could basically trample all over everybody's rights unless those rights were built into the Constitution. So basically a promise was made. If you ratify the Constitution in the very first Congress that comes together after the Constitution, we will create a Bill of Rights. That Bill of Rights will be added to the Constitution, and therefore those protections will be built into the Constitution. So the first 10 amendments to the Constitution are known as the Bill of Rights. And all I'm going to do here is give you a summary of those. We could go into this in a lot more depth, uh, but right now we're just going to do a summary of the Bill of Rights. So in order to get the Constitution ratified, the framers promised a Bill of Rights would be passed in the new Congress. I just said that. And the first 10 amendments to the Constitution basically set out the rights we are all guaranteed as citizens. Um, these are considered the basis of American citizenship. And you will often hear people refer to their rights in the Bill of Rights when they are discussing what rights we have as citizens. So now in the next slide, I will go ahead and enumerate those in a brief summary. So there are 10 amendments to the Constitution. Basically, the First Amendment is the most famous one. Most people know this as freedom of speech, but it's actually more um, expansive than that. Um, the First Amendment it guarantees you your freedom of speech, and it, it guarantees you freedom of the press, so the media can report anything and cannot be restricted by the government with uh, a small national security exception. Uh, freedom of religion. You are free to practice whatever religion you choose. You are also free to practice no religion whatsoever, and the government cannot have an official religion that people must follow and freedom to petition. As a citizen, you have the freedom to ask your government for changes or for what we call a redress of grievances. If you have a grievance, you have a right to have that grievance heard. Um, there's also amendments two through four. These have to do with your personal rights um, and their protections for citizens. So for example, the second amendment is the right to bear arms. There's also the Fourth Amendment, which uh, protects you from uh, unlawful searches and seizures by the government. The police cannot enter your home unless they have a duly authorized warrant by a court or they have probable cause. And then there's Amendments 5 through 8. Basically, these are legal rights and protections if you are brought to court either criminally or civilly. If you're brought to court criminally or being accused of a crime, if you're being brought to court civilly, that means you're being sued by somebody else. And finally, Amendments 9 and 10 are basically technical amendments. They basically say that any rights that are not given to the federal government under the Constitution automatically belong to the states. Um, so it clarifies that the federal government cannot take on any extra powers um, that any extra powers that aren't specifically laid out in the Constitution, the states get to keep for themselves. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the point.
At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it would be appropriate for you to take a few moments to summarize the process of amending the Constitution and the importance of the Bill of Rights. Your summary should describe what the process is like if you want to change the Constitution, and it should talk about basically what the Bill of Rights is and why it's in the Constitution. If you can do that, you'll have an amazing summary. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl once again signing off on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.